Hi everyone, my name is Sergei Gusev and welcome to my channel. Today I will continue talking about portraits and show you how to draw a portrait with colored pencils polychromos. Before I start, I want you to subscribe to this channel and turn the bell on, so you won't miss out on my new videos, which are coming really soon. You can also support me on Patreon and download the full video tutorials from my webpage to improve your skills. Ok, if you are ready, let's begin. In this tutorial I'm going to draw a girl's portrait. There are different ways to start off. And if you have watched any of my videos on my channel, you know that there are different ways to start painting in oils. Well, of course this time I'm not going to paint, but the way we start drawing is actually quite similar to the way we start painting in oils. So we can start painting from a detail, or we can start painting from big spots of light and shadow. So when you start drawing, you can also start drawing from one detail, or from big tonal and color relationships. This time I'm gonna start drawing from a detail from the eye. So when drawing, we should apply all the same basic rules we talked about when I was painting in oils. I mean it's all about the big form of the head, the big volume, big tonal and color relationships, construction, anatomy, proportions and so on. We cannot ignore this basic stuff. So when drawing the eye remember about its spherical shape, which means it has a volume, it is not flat, it is not simply white, it has a light and shadow. And here I want to remind you the basic rule. The shadows are gonna be always darker than the lights. Which means that the lightest shadow is always gonna be darker than the darkest semitone. If you ignore this rule, you won't be able to create a three-dimensional portrait. I mean, we perceive volume because there is light and shadow. Light is lighter and shadow is darker. But if everything is equally light or equally dark, the portrait is gonna look flat. We perceive the volume because of this tonal difference. We see how the form turns away because the tonal values change, because it gets darker. If we make everything completely white or completely black or dark gray or light gray, we won't get any volume we will get a really flat, inexpressive and boring drawing. So my basic tip is to care a lot for the tonal values. They are much more important than the colors, believe me, guys. The next basic thing you should remember about is the construction of the head and facial details. I mean, every facial detail has its own volume. Everything consists of big planes. For example, if we look at the nose, we will see that it has two side planes, one frontal plane and one lower plane, which is almost always in a shadow. Therefore, when drawing the nose, we should make the upper plane lighter, in a strong light, the side plane in a darker semitone and the lower plane in a shadow. This way, making the tonal values different, we will get a three-dimensional nose. The same rule we should apply to any facial detail. If you look at the lips, for example, you can also point out a few planes. So when you draw any facial detail, first of all find out what you draw – light or shadow. Make the shadows darker than the lights. And make the lights lighter than the shadows. Also, don't forget about the light source. Working on the facial details, make sure you understand how this facial detail is turned to the light source or away from it. This is another basic rule which is gonna help you to create a three-dimensional portrait. Another big issue beginners might have when drawing with colored pencils is getting the right skin tones. So let's talk about it a little more. First of all, when drawing with polychromas, you can't blend one color into another one. It's almost impossible even if you use blending stamps, pressing them really hard. 
These pencils are not supposed to blend. It's all about multiple layers. So the best solution is to start off from the lightest one and then put darker ones on top. You probably noticed that I started from light tones and then I slowly darken the tones by using other darker pencils. Again, the way these pencils mix is a visual. For example, when we work with oils, we can mix white and red and get a pink color. Here it's not working like that. It is almost impossible to mix white color with any other color in this drawing technique. So the best solution is to start from a light color like for example light flesh and then darken it by adding light ultramarine and cinnamon again guys it's almost impossible to blend white in you can lighten colors by adding white but it's gonna be just a tiny bit almost invisible so in order to avoid mistakes i highly recommend you to start from light tones and not the other way around it's gonna be so much easier to darken colors than lighten them up. If you are not really experienced in drawing with these pencils, I would suggest you to draw first with pastels, because it is much easier to blend pastel pencils. Right now I'm working on the lips. You see that I made the first layer quite light and transparent. I'm not pressing the pencils hard. Again, it's all about layering. Working on the lips, remember, as I told you in the beginning, about the big planes. The upper lip is gonna be slightly darker than the lower one because it is mostly in the shadow and in a dark semitone. The lower lip catches quite a lot of light from the light source, so it's gonna be lighter and slightly colder. Make the edges of the lips very soft, they should almost merge with the skin around. And please avoid making hard dark outlines. There are no outlines at all. So work with lights and shadows. It's all about big planes but not lines. And especially when we work on a girl's portrait, skin tones have to be quite smooth. We should avoid making hard edges. All is actually very soft and solid. You can notice that when I get closer to the end I start darkening the skin tones. As I told you, it's all about layering, so I started from the light ones and now I'm adding dark ones, which are gonna add more volume into our portrait. I would also advise you avoiding lots of highlights on the skin. Skin is not glossy at all, it's quite matte. So there is no sense to draw all those highlights you can see on the source picture. But we are using a picture as a reference, we don't have to copy everything we see. So make the image quite solid, don't break it down with multiple highlights. Of course we should put highlights into the eyes because the surface of the cornea is quite glossy. But I would avoid making these bright highlights on the cheekbone, nose and forehead. I would soften them, making them slightly darker and more solid. Believe me, the final result will look more artistic and picturesque. Ok, right now I'm working on the ear. The ear is a very complicated form. It has lots of small different planes which constantly turn toward the light source or away from the light source, getting lighter and darker, colder and warmer. We should actually be quite careful drawing the ear. Usually beginners don't spend enough attention to the ear because it's quite far away from us. I mean, it's further away than the nose and the eyes. Beginners think that it's not really important to draw the ear. But that's not right. It's really easy to see how advanced the artist is by looking at his drawings of the ears. If you have enough skills, you should demonstrate it on the drawing of the ear. Closer to the end, I start working on the hair. And again, the first layer is quite light. I'm using walnut brown pencil. And only after that I start adding black. Well, of course the hair isn't pure black, so I'm also adding some ochre and light ultramarine, especially into the highlight on the hair. Again guys, listen to my basic tip. The hair is not flat. We can't make it just dark brown or black or any other color. 
Actually, the hair follows the shape of the skull. It gets lighter and colder when getting closer to the light source and darker and slightly warmer when it is getting far away from the light source. That is why the lower part is gonna be quite dark and I'm gonna use some walnut brown and even black. And the hide is gonna be quite cold, I'm using a little ultramarine and even adding some purple tints into it. I wanna remind you that you don't have to press the pencils really hard. If you do so, it's gonna be almost impossible to blend another color in. Work in layers, from light to dark ones. Add different tints and shades. I don't really want to work on the backgrounds in this case because it is not really important. I mean, this tutorial is more about drawing the head, about the right tonal values and colors and some basic rules, so the background isn't important for us. But if you have a lot of time, if you want to work on the backgrounds, you should do so. It's not gonna change your work a lot. It's up to you and your taste. Okay, right now I'm getting really close to the end. I really want to know your honest opinion in the comments below. I mean, tell you if you like it or if you don't like it, tell me about your experience in drawing with polychromos or any other colored pencils, it's gonna be really interesting for me to read. Tell me if you want to see more drawing tutorials. Tell me what issues you have in drawing with colored pencils. Also tell me if you want to see more drawing tutorials or you still prefer to see more oil painting tutorials. Or maybe you want to see both. So guys, let me know in the comments what you think, what you like or dislike. If you like this video, you can help me out and share this tutorial with your friends in your favorite social media. Subscribe to my channel, turn the bell on and you won't miss out on my new tutorials. Download the full video tutorials from my webpage and subscribe to my Facebook and Instagram accounts. Ok, here I'm gonna stop and let's look at how it turned out. I hope guys you enjoyed this tutorial, I wish you good luck with your artworks and see you soon.